I'm Mr. B, and today we're talking alternators, okay? So we have our $400 Jetta here uh, behind me, and I'm going to show y'all how to remove and replace the alternator on this car. So uh, most of your uh, Mark IVs are going to work the same way. Uh, some of the engines are a little bit more difficult. This is actually one of the easier engines to do the alternators on. And uh, we're going to go over how to remove the belt, how to remove the tensioner, and how to remove the alternator. Also, I'm going to go over a couple of tips with identification of these alternators. Sometimes your parts pro will ask you if it is one or the other, and I'm gonna show you all the difference, and also show you some special tools in case your alternator has a clutch pulley on it to remove that pulley and to replace it with a new pulley. As you know, if you get an alternator, a lot of times the pulley is not always on the alternator and you have to swap it out with your old one, and this is pretty much the same deal with these. So. Uh, we have our $400 Jetta here. There's actually nothing wrong with the alternator. I'm just going into teaching electrical, so I want to go ahead and show you how to do a removal and replacement and uh, show you all the differences between the two types of alternators. So let's get started. Okay, so here is our two different types of alternators. We have one, which will be a Vallejo right here. So. We have the other one, which will be a Bosch. So sometimes the parts pro will ask you, you know, is it a Bosch or a Vallejo? You should be able to read on the back here and tell the difference. Also, some of these will tell what amperage they are. This one is, as you can see, a 90 amp alternator right here. You should have that on the back. And this is an aftermarket alternator. It's an AutoZone alternator. This is an original equipment alternator that had gone bad on another car that I had had and I decided to keep the alternator just to show you guys the difference between the two. So some of these will have a pulley on them that will have a clutch, have a plastic piece right here and it will have a clutch inserted in this. That way if it locks up or if it overruns or anything like that, the belt's not going to be thrown off. And you're going to need special tools for that, and I'm going to show you what they are. I'll also put the Amazon link in the description for those special tools. Okay, so our tools needed will be, this is a Gates Kit 91024 ADP toolkit. This kit will have this piece right here, which is what you're going to need for these clutched alternators. And you'll also have a star bit in the center to remove that. So this will be to hold the clutch and that'll be to remove. This also has a couple of other tools for um, different alternators on different type of vehicles. So this is a really good kit to have if you do a lot of alternators. Also other tools we're gonna need are just our 16 millimeter wrench and a 3 8 drive socket set. I would recommend deep well and shallow well and just a chrome socket set. Shouldn't really need any power tools unless you want to use them, but so this is fairly easy. You can actually go even quarter inch if you need to and still get enough power to remove this alternator and the parts needed to get to the alternator. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do with any starting or charging work, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my light here, is remove my negative contact for my battery cable. So this takes a 10 millimeter right here just loosen it up a little bit and this should pop off that's going to render the system safe enough for us to work on we're not going to deal with any arcing but while i'm here i'm going to also check out my battery mounted fuse box so this fuse box right here is starting to go bad we're starting to see some heat damage and everything from these and so if you're dealing with a alternator issue um, this may be part of the issue. So your alternator cable comes in right here and this, you have a fusible link right here, about a 110 amp fusible link for this. So we need to make sure that this fusible link is good. Just check power on both ends, you know, while the battery's plugged up. Check and make sure you know you go power, 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 and you should have power on both ends. And also, this will control your fans and some of your air conditioning stuff. Make sure these fuses are good too. These fuse boxes have come down a lot in price. I'm going to go ahead and order one. But also a lot of the damage from these fuse boxes can come from this cable right here, which goes all the way to the alternator, can build up some resistance 
and can cause some extra heat build up here so a lot of times we'll have to remove this cable and put another one in and you can get these online they're pretty cheap too as well so just remember that your alternator problem might not be an actual alternator problem it could be caused by this fuse box this fusible link right here or even this cable going to the alternator okay the first thing I'm gonna do after I get my battery on uh, hooked is remove my serpentine belt so behind this little hose here you'll see a nub right here and this you pull back on with your open end of your wrench and this does have some spring pressure behind it so be careful you're just going to slip this off of the alternator like so and then gently let it spring back okay Okay, now with the belt out of the way, I'm going to remove the belt tensioners because there's a bolt down here that we have to get to and this tensioner is going to be in the way. So let me go ahead and remove that. You may need a combination of deep and shallow well 13 millimeters to get this off here. Just gonna loosen them up. Put the wrench and they should pretty much come off by hand. You don't have to torque these too tight when you go back with them. They are really just support bolts. You may also want to take this bolt right here. I think it's either a five or six millimeter Allen head if it's too tight against this tensioner. A lot of times I can just kind of bend it out of the way and it's not going to have any issues going back. So, third bolt, all these bolts are the same right here for this tensioner so no worries about getting them mixed up. They will work any way you put them in. And once I get this tensioner out I'll show you that lug that I pulled on If you have a 1.8 turbo or a diesel, this will be a little different. So I'm going to pull this down. And here's your tensioner here. This is a good time to change it too if you have any doubts. And also with your, your belt. But this is that lug that I was grabbing on with that open end wrench. And I was able to manipulate this to get the belt off of the alternator. Okay, now focusing on the connections to the back of the alternator. We have a 13 millimeter right here. And again, do not touch this bolt if you have your battery still hooked up. Because if you touch this in ground, you'll start arcing things. I'm gonna be careful not to over tighten this bolt when you go back with the alternator replacement. It can break off. Once you get that out, now this harness is held on by an eight millimeter down here. I'm gonna show you when we pull the alternator out, that's, that'll be the last bolt that we take off. And then you have your regulator plugged in. It's just a one wire plug. It goes up here. I'm gonna press this in, press this tab down, and it should just pop right off. And now we just have two more bolts, plus that little bolt down here that holds the harness on for this alternator and we can just roll it out. Okay, so we have two bolts. They go all the way through right here. Again, 13 millimeters. So we just remove one. And once you get them loose, they should come out with your hand. We have another one down here. And just a three inch drive ratchet really all you need Oop, dropped a bolt but I heard it hit the floor so that's great and these bolts again the top and the bottom one are the same so if you get them confused no big deal and they're obviously different than the other bolts they're longer is the longest bolt you're dealing with so after we get those off, the alternator will feel like it's stuck. And I'm gonna show you how to get that 
uh, unstuck here. So I forgot to mention this in the tool list, but you may need a good size flathead screwdriver or a pry bar, and you're just gonna rock this out of the way. I'm gonna show you what's making it so tight here in just a second. Once you get it loose, a lot of times you can just rock it out with your hand. Of course, this one's going to be difficult. There we go. All right, so got this off, and right here, let me make sure the camera is showing you guys that. Is that 8 millimeter? So we're going to go ahead and get it out of the way. And this just keeps the harness from getting pinched. Some alternators don't even have this. Some do. If yours doesn't, just make sure that this cable is not pinched when you're putting the alternator back. The alternator I'm pulling off here is not the factory alternator which for 20 year old cars to be expected so once we get that out of the way i'm able to pull this alternator off like so now before we go installing i'm going to show you what to do with these these are little bushings that slide in and out and give us a lot of problems so hang tight Okay, so this is the alternator that I took off of the Jetta. So we've got these bushings in here that, that will move. Uh, they're pressed into the alternator housing. Now, if you don't do what I'm about to, to show you, this is what's going to happen. You will end up cracking the housing where this goes because this will bend in. And this is cracked right here. So what you need is a 3 8 drive, just the 19 millimeter short socket, and you need one of the bolts that you used for the tensioner. And you're gonna, what, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make yourself a little puller, and you're gonna pull these out without damaging the ears of the alternator. So you put it this right here, and you put this screw through. And you just want just the smallest amount of pull on this to pull this back. You're going to use your 13 millimeter socket and ratchet. And you're going to pull this back just a little bit. And what that will do is allow this to be put back on easier. You want to do this on both sides. You may need to use a vise to hold the alternator. It's a little bit easier. And so you're just moving this over maybe just like a millimeter or so. And that will make it easy to slide the alternator back in. Okay, so I got the pins pushed in, those bushings pushed back in. We are going to find this harness. I'm going to go ahead and put, bolt this harness back to the back of the alternator with that 8 millimeter. that back on. Go get my ratchet with my socket. I'm going to make sure that this is pointed the right direction. And not too tight. Slide this back on. And again, this should be pretty easy since we went ahead and Hold one in. Remember 
then I drop that other one so reach underneath the car and grab it. the slot here run these in and yeah, make sure that all your cables are going to hook up properly that 13 millimeter nut on the back of the alternator. You don't want to over tighten that, just hand tighten all this stuff. It doesn't have to be too tight. Got my two 13s right here. And one down here. back again just snug it up now we just have to put our tensioner back on get them slide this tensioner just like so sliding it underneath where this bracket comes in at. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw each of these in. I almost dropped that bolt there. I have to use two hands here. It's a little bit of a tight spot. Get a couple of turns in with each screw. You don't want to run one, one in before you get the other ones in here. I'm just gonna kind of move this out of the way if you need to. Comes right out of the holder. Run these in. If you got an air ratchet, it'll help right here. We grab our thirteen. Tighten them up one by one. Again, nothing too crazy, nothing too tight. Now we have our now we have our serpentine belt here. And it's gonna go like so. I like to leave all the slack near the alternator and I'll pull this back with my wrench sometimes it's a little difficult to put on if it gets out of line near the bottom you won't have enough slack to put it on at the top There we go. And just double check your alignment. Also double check, make sure this hose gets put where it's supposed to. And then we're all set to hook the battery back up. And so now we are going to put this back on, tighten it up with the 10. While I'm tightening this up, 
If you learned anything from this video, just go ahead and give me a like on this video. You know that always helps. And feel free to subscribe as well so you can get these videos directly to you. Put that cap back on. And we're all set. Okay, that about does it for us today. Remember to always properly test your alternator before you replace it. A lot of alternators get replaced for no reason because of dead batteries or bad main fuses or a lot of other different things that can cause problems with the alternator. So make sure that you're testing the alternator before you replace it. And also make sure you're testing the battery properly, making sure that your grounds are properly uh, torqued down, making sure you don't have any rust or corrosion anywhere. And as always, follow the factory guidelines for torque and testing procedure. And uh, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I'm pretty good about getting back to the comments and answering questions. And if you have any ideas for any videos using any of the cars I have before, because most of the cars I use in here I own, so I always have access to them. So um, the $400 Jetta is, uh, you know, I bought that specifically to make videos with. So anything that you need done on that, just let me know. And I've got a couple of interesting electrical problems on there that I'm gonna make videos with as well. So always like, uh, subscribe, uh, find me on Facebook, I'm at, uh, find me on Instagram, Twitter, VK, I'm pretty much everywhere that you can be, just look up. And uh, hopefully you learned something from this. Uh, if you did, you know, give me uh, a shout out in the comments and maybe a share on social media so I can get my views up. That does it for us. Uh, we'll see you next time.